Hi, Eric. I've got this uh, really unique uh, custom-made guitar that I had built for me a number of years ago. And it is beautiful, and I really like it. However, it's virtually unplayable. The fret job is terrible. In fact, it's so bad, if you look at this, if I stretch the string or slide it all, and it goes off the fretboard, it'll actually get caught on the frets. The strings will. They're popping so bad. Um, I don't know if the fret fretboard radius is not right, and I don't know if this is something that you think you could maybe fix for me, but I wanted you to look at it as it's got, you know, a very unique um, cut right here, so the frets aren't even full-length frets, and since it is a, a set neck, you can tell that it's it, it would not be the easiest thing in the world to get any file or whatever across over here. I, maybe it's something that you could do. Anyway, I wanted you to look at this video, look at this unique guitar that I've got here, and and uh, is it something that we can we can save? Is it something that you think you could fix and make this thing playable again? Because like I said, the way it is right now, uh, the fretwork is just, it's horrific. Not good at all. Anyway, take a look at it. Let me know what you think. Hey, everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. So this will be the next project guitar to be worked on. And not only does it have some cosmetic flaws with it, it also has some playability flaws with it. And the biggest ones here that I'm noticing is the frets themselves, which was uh, documented in what the guy was Toyona was telling me um, was going on with this. And I could feel a lot of sharp fret ends over here. And it's not just one side or the other. It is both sides. And it just, yeah, real shitty. Seems like they did a nice job right here. Yeah, they did a decent, no, not really. It is sharp, this point is catching my skin. Um, but it's just really, really bad. I'm looking at the frets themselves, and I'm kind of seeing somebody try to do some gluing in there. Um, and when I look at the fret ends on top of the binding, either the tangs weren't filed, when they were nipped or something else is going on over here I can't really I'm putting pressure on it with my fingernail and I'm not really pushing the fret down at all and it doesn't look like the frets are up but there is a gap between the binding and the edge of the fret but like I said there is remnants of crazy glue or super glue or whatever you want to call it on here which kind of brings me to a letter here that was inside the case now the owner the owner knows of this I'm not going to show it on camera because there's names on it but there is a two-way letter here one from the owner and a reply from the builder so it says here hi blank this is to the builder some of the frets on the, the uh, super Super Glide are popping up. My local tech does not feel comfortable fixing it. He's afraid the slots haven't the aren't the, the slots aren't deep enough and if he tries to hammer the frets back in, the wood binding would split. What do you recommend? And then it's the owner's name. Um, it says hi to the owner. Uh, great to hear from you. Uh, there was a short time when I was not gluing the frets. Uh, the frets in. Apparently yours may have been made during that time. Seasons are changing changing from cold to warm, which is usually a problem when usually which is usually the problem when that happens. Not necessarily. Uh, the binding would only split if he hammers way too hard and there is plenty of room 
to get those frets back down with no problems. If it's possible, have him run some super glue under the frets and you will more than likely can avoid this from happening next season. The frets do not need to be removed. Uh, just have him run some thin super glue under the frets. Well, not under the frets, but along the edge of the frets. The fret slots were slotted to fit the fret wire, and that is all it should take. Sorry, I did not do that to the beginning with, but this guy doesn't put any commas or nothing. But I was under the impression the slots were tight enough to hold the frets, considering uh, the blade was made for the exact wire. Okay. He must be talking about the blade that he cut the slots with. Yours was the first Madagascar ebony fretboard I ever did. Maybe that has something to do with it, and it's the builder's name. All right, so this is where um, this is where I, I don't like guitar builders. All right, if this was something that I built. And somebody purchased it from me. You would want to make things right between you and the customer, right? You would say, okay, I'll pay for shipping. Send it back to me. I'll see what I can do to fix the problem. And I'll send it back to you. Uh, and that would be like free of charge, you know, because that's a mistake that the builder made, not a mistake that the buyer made. Well, maybe the buyer made a mistake of purchasing it, but either way, you know, it, it's just one of those things where the builder is responsible for his build. All right. If something is not right with his build, that's when you need to get a hold of the builder and say, hey, just like the owner of this guitar did, this is what's going on. And by right, the builder should say, hey, send it back to me. I'll pay for the shipping. Uh, we'll take care of this for you right away. All right. That's my thoughts of this. All right. So somebody already did hit it with some glue. I could see remnants of all over the fretboard, especially around the ends over here, um, which that is going to have to be taken care of. And I'm going to have to pluck, probably pluck these frets. Now, Let's see here with the yeah, very little next to none relief in the neck at all. But I'm noticing quite a few things on this thing. Now, there was some masking tape on the back of the guitar here. Some of it was on the edge over here, which I can feel what he was talking about. This edge is pretty rough. It's not smooth. And it's rough all the way, mostly around the whole the whole body okay it's pretty rough there's some areas where you, it just feels like it just might have been too thin I found a burn mark right over here in the finish where the buffer burned it um, yeah inside of here there's a lot of remnants of glue as you can see right there the discoloration the fret wire is sticking up on the ends and very sharp on the ends another thing is that somebody put this on a hanger before the finish was dry and you can kind of see right there if you can see it there's like a darker spot and the finish is pushed over to one side that's showing me that there was a hanger right here and it's also on this side as well so this was hung before the finish was even cured and it stretched and pulled it so that's telling me that this is not lacquer this is probably a poly that's on here which is fine by me because that's what i'm going to be end up putting back on there to fix these problems another thing that i noticed as well which is maybe not the builder's fault but the builder could have caught this before he sent it out because you know there there should be a curing time and a drying time i don't send shit out unless i know for myself that the the paint the finish is cured enough to be handled and worked with you know put back together in this that and the other um maybe this didn't happen this way with this and that's why the finish stretched and pulled where it was hung over here which that like i said i'm going to have to going to have to fix and i can kind of pick at it and chip off so yeah that's not that's not lacquer that that's more of a uh a poly than anything else 
but one of the things that happened with this is if I get this in the light enough and you look at the light and the finish and you can kind of see lines in the glare like especially like when you look at it right over here as I move it you kind of see lines like a like the glare lines the finish shrunk into the maple and what it did is it caused it to wave and the whole top is pretty much like this I can see it I can actually feel some of it that's not right either even though it looks nice and everything else it just should have like a glass finish to it and it's not that hard to achieve so this is going to get all wet sanded again uh, I'm going to pluck the strings off this put the nut back where it's supposed to be because the nut is hanging off of one side more than the other so that has to be moved over uh, I don't think I have to do anything as far as nut sliding but I do want to see if this nut is because it does the strings are kind of deep in the nut and especially the lower three but I do want to check out how he did this because this here feels all right this one here I can it's grabbing my skin and kind of tearing it a little bit the pickups aren't correct for this either um, I can't remember the exact name of the pickup but for a wider uh, bridge it takes a different type of a pickup they're wider pickups now the humbucker here is good the strings kind of line up pretty good over the humbucker but the mini humbucker here it's longer and if you could see like these two the sides over here on each side of the pickup kind of line up together pretty good but this mini humbucker is a lot longer than this Seymour Duncan humbucker and I don't know if somebody stripped out some screws or something but these are the wrong screws for all of this is the long strong screws it looks like somebody put different type of screws over here and I bet you they're not even machine screws because a machine screw or a metal screw the a machine screw the threads are a lot closer together kind of like when you end up taking out a humbucker off the mounting ring and you can kind of see that there is very fine threads I bet you these don't have that um, is that a crack in the uh, it might be just a scratch in the plastic over here this plate here needs to be polished up looks like it's an aluminum plate it needs to be polished up really good it, it just looks pretty pretty shitty so we have a five-way selector switch here and we have push and pull knobs volume tone probably and uh, yeah the you know this is kind of this is kind of stupid too you're gonna make a truss rod cover and you want the truss rod cover to match the finish of the body of the guitar clear coat it so it matches the binding and everything else of the guitar. There's no clear coat on that truss rod cover. So this is it. I don't feel any cracking or anything going on in the joint over here. That seems to be pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up giving this thing a 800 grit rough clear coat sand. Uh, what they call a level sanding but at first I'll address the fretboard and get that taken care of for him um, I got a feeling I'm going to end up pulling the frets I got a feeling I'm going to end up doing a radius on the neck on the fretboard itself because I don't like the way these stick up on the ends over here and it looks like that the fret is on top of the the frets on top of the fretboard but not on top of the binding it there's a gap and these are kind of sharp so we'll fix her up that's kind of what uh, my little story of what's going on with this thing for the owner and then for you guys who are going to be looking forward to seeing me go through the process of restoring this I guess because that's basically what it's going to be all right you guys take it easy have a good one and I'll catch up with y'all later